Welcome to Nine Bob Note with Paul Isles Rush and Ken Moss. Hello and welcome to Nine Bob Note. I am Paul. And I'm Ken, having a drink. <laughs> As it should be. As it should be, of course. <laughs> I sing the whistle. <laughs> and you are in the driver's seat today, so it's over to you. Blackouts. <laughs> it's as bad as it sounds. <laughs> this is from an article in the Metro. <laughs> this is really ah, yeah. <laughs> a ripe seam of topics recently. But this is to do with a play called Slave Play by Jeremy O'Harris. And this was brought to the West End, and they hosted two blackout nights where tickets were only sold to black people. Right. <laughs> because there's... I don't know whether you've seen in the news recently, there is this push to get more black people to go to the theatre. Mm. The old faithful that it's racism, a systemic racism has caused this, and this is why black people don't go to the cinema. And it's not for them, and they feel excluded. I don't hold with that at all. What I really don't hold with is having black-only spaces, basically, for... Anything, in, in, in just the same way as, as I would think that having white-only spaces <laughs> or anybody-only spaces is a retrograde step in terms of breaking down boundaries and tolerance and just general reduction of isms that we have across the board. It came in for tremendous backlash and reading between the lines, it was done as a publicity stunt for a play mm. that didn't do terribly well. Again, the play was all about slavery, strangely enough. <laughs> and um, the problem that the theatre industry's got isn't so much that there's a demographic that doesn't go to the theatre. It's possibly that they're just not interested. It, it has to be nowadays that everybody is interested in everything and if they're not, then they must be being forced out. I'm not particularly interested in rap music. I don't feel forced out. I just don't like it very much, or indeed at all. <laughs> but I don't feel in any way excluded. I remember uh, an interview with Lil Wayne, a very erudite speaker, actually, and, and sort of measured responses when all the Black Lives Matter stuff was on it. I remember seeing an interview with him, and he said, you're talking bollocks that uh, it's racist. When I put on a, a concert or a, do a gig... It's just a sea of white faces. It's, it's rubbish that there's this great anti-black sentiment. It's just not there. And that was in America, mm. which is a, a very curious beast. As a, <laughs> so I don't know really what the point of it was beyond the publicity <laughs> stunt, but I don't think that that did any favours whatsoever uh, when you're shutting people off from something and saying, well, this is only for us. And another one was in Australia recently where there was um, an art exhibition and there was one particular area of this exhibition. It was all screened off mm. and it was women only. Only women were allowed in. It was to show men how life used to be for women. <sighs> right, but it isn't like that anymore, is it? And somebody ended up taking them to court because they said, well, I've paid for this ticket, <laughs> yeah. but a third of the exhibition is sealed off to me because I'm a man. And eventually it was ruled in his favour that, you no, know, you can't have a women's only section that, that goes way against our equality laws. So they shut the exhibition down <laughs> and said, well, in a way, we've got our message across. <laughs> yes, we've just well, lost <laughs> millions of dollars. <laughs> so to me, they are massively retrograde steps. I just thought I'd ask, because you have a much different view on the world than I do. I look at these things and roll my eyes constantly. You have a different perspective on the world. What do you think? It does seem stupid. <laughs> yes, when you think of people who go to the theatre, it does seem to be largely white people. As you say, that could be because historically the theatre used to be, a you know, for the upper classes. And yes. historically white people were the upper classes for the most part. And it might just have fallen on from that. But maybe it's the plays and the shows that are on don't appeal to a lot of black people. Maybe they're interested in other things. It actually seems to me to do this on a play that's about the slave trade 
it just seems like a huge misjudgment. I, yes, yeah, I imagine that there's probably going to be quite a lot of black actors in this play. Denzel Washington's daughter's in it. Oh, oh well, yes. well, all credit or to her. Or was, yeah. before it's short. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she's unemployed now and homeless. <laughs> and it's because of white people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do agree with you. It just doesn't seem right. We have had, and we're talking for hundreds of years, people of different groups. So, yes, black people, people of colour, generally women have said, we want to be treated equally. And that, for the most part, has happened. We, you know, especially, in, you know, we're talking about in the UK, there are laws that say we should be treating everybody yes. equally regardless of their gender, their race, their religion, whatever. And so at what point did we then say, well, no, we don't want to be treated equally. We want to punish you. So your, your example about the, the exhibition, well, we want men to know what it felt like 100 years ago when we weren't allowed to go into art exhibitions. We weren't alive 100 years ago. We didn't <laughs> make those rules. Yes, so it, you know, it might make us feel awkward, but we, there's nothing we can do about it. Presumably the purpose of this blackout was just purely to get black people to come to the cinema, come to the theatre, you'll like it. But was there all an element of this plays about the slave trade? Let's see how white people feel being excluded. And it's like, well... But how progressive is that? Well, how, exactly, yeah. What's the message you're conveying here, apart from this is only for us? I mean, it's just dry, all these drives, and it doesn't matter what it is, whatever group do it. And if you can hear that, dear listener, that's uh, <laughs> another hailstorm on that side. They're just driving a wedge deeper and deeper. So for all these great treat us the same, you know, we want rights, Every time you say that, whatever group you represent, doing stuff like this, pulling stunts like this, it drives a wedge deeper between whatever two halves of community are coming together. Mm. The one thing I'll say is we live in a diverse country. Yes. 18% of the population now is non-white. So that's less than one in five people is of colour. 4% of our population at the time of recording is black. Yeah. So just break it down as to how many of the population are black and why perhaps the theatres aren't full to capacity with black people because there's only one in 25 of us is black. Yeah. And if you did so just pick a random theatre, you know, like in the West End and you counted all of the people in there, I would be very surprised if less than 4% of the people you know, on a random night in the theatre were black. Well, uh, yes, because anywhere you go now, anywhere you go, it's a mixed demographic. Yeah. And if there is a genuine drive if you know, if for the theatre, if there is a genuine drive, yes, we've noticed black people don't like going to the theatre. Look into the reasons. If the reason is because the plays don't appeal to them, then write some plays that they, you know, that are about things they like. If it's because there may be, you know, like if we're talking about London, the cost of a theatre ticket in central London is astronomical. So if what we're saying is that there's an economic barrier to black people going to the theatre because the tickets are prohibitively expensive, then give discount tickets. Go out to the you know the community groups and say on Tuesday nights you get a fifty percent discount on tickets. Absolutely fine. No one's going to argue with that. Saying this show on Friday, you're going to love it because we're not going to let, let any white people in. No one's going to buy into that. It's causing unnecessary division. I can't imagine anyone thought, oh, well, that's brilliant. What a brilliant idea. Uh, and as you say, it caused a backlash and it probably got the play more publicity, which is probably what they intended. But Not enough, according to... Uh... <laughs> yeah. The other thing I will say is just on, on this particular theme, there seems to be an awful lot now of black things that are all to do with <laughs> slavery. Now... You have to be very careful how you edit this. <laughs> <laughs> There's an awful lot of black things out there. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Somebody somewhere in the, in the future, if I ever become <laughs> famous for whatever reason, they could take these podcasts <laughs> and edit them to ribbons so I could say anything. <laughs> they are a lot to do with slavery and mm. oppression and 
We have moved on. Are there no other topic? I mean, there's uh, been a, a bit of a, a thing recently where Juliet, in a, a I think as a Westman, uh, has been cast as uh, a black woman. Yes. I can completely understand why that has had a backlash. Because it's largely stunt casting. Now, you put on Romeo and Juliet where the entire cast black. I'm in. Because you've just changed the entire dynamic of the play. It's not, you can just, all of a sudden, you're not looking at one actress that's been stunt casted. You're looking at a different take on Romeo and Juliet. So I think that there's a lot of own goals being scored by doing things they already know is going to rub people up the wrong way. Mm. Um, I don't know whether the writer, I presume the writer of this particular play is black. And I, so I don't know anything about William Shakespeare. <laughs> But there's a lot of stuff that he's just clearly designed to generate a response rather than, what's a different way of doing this? Mm. I mean, I, I would far rather have a black sitcom or a black drama, purely nothing but people of colour in it. Like Desmond's. <laughs> I never watched that. But that ran for years. It was extremely yeah. popular. I don't know. There's probably some token white character dropped in. <laughs> But even then, you know, ditch the token white character. Just have something black and let's embrace it for just something new and fresh and different rather than this homogenized slop that we've got in every single program now. Because nothing, nothing's got an identity anymore. Can you really genuinely say that any series really now leaps out in anything like the way that they used to? Yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from. And there is definitely that element of that. It's difficult because I get where they're coming from because they're saying we, what we're trying to do is reflect the diversity of the world. And that's great. And the Romeo and Juliet example, I agree with you to an extent that, you know, it does seem to be, let's do this to get a reaction because it's Tom Holland, isn't it? Spider-Man who's playing Romeo. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so already there's a lot of interest in this. And so they were like, let's keep this publicity going. And all of the publicity about it has been, we're reacting to these comments. And I didn't see any of the comments when, you know, when she was announced as a cast, whether there were these hundreds and hundreds of comments from the racists. But yeah, it would be nice if we could just sort of say, you know, she went along, she auditioned for the part. And she got it because she was the best actress. Presumably in the play, unless they're doing this colorblind casting, which oh, which, which is daft, they, presumably they're then going to have to cast black people as her parents and the family, you know, the wider family, the Capulet mm. family, which could work, you know, if they do that. But yeah, I do get it. There is that element, especially the way that it's being handled. There is that element of this has been done to get a reaction. And again, going back to what we've talked about quite a bit recently, that's what gets people's backs up. Because you take it away from the play, whatever play it is or whatever TV series it is, mm. you're taking away from the actors themselves. Yeah. The focus isn't going to be on the performance, the story, how good this thing is. It's all going to be on the stunt casting. There's something that I don't watch. I think it's Wolf Hall. And a character has been recast for the second series of Wolf Hall. This buff Yorkshireman has been replaced by the same character played by an Egyptian. Right. Now, if I was a fan of Wolf Hall and that character suddenly popped up as a you know, 18th, 19th century Yorkshireman, was this swarthy Egyptian chap, with the best will in the world, you've drawn yourself right out of that world. Mm. It, it stands out like a sore thought. So all you've focused on is... That doesn't fit very well. And you could say that about anybody that's miscast. How many miscasts have there been over the years? <laughs> Nothing new. But you, you're really, you're inviting dissent. Yes. When it doesn't need to be there, you're not, you might be ticking the boxes, but you're not actually doing anybody any favours. You're not doing your own cause any favours. Who's winning from this? Yeah. When the, the Romeo and Juliet thing, as you say, it takes away from them, them two as a lead pairing. Yeah. By all accounts, she's a, a really good actress. Oh, so I understand, yes. But 
whatever her performance is, the reaction will be she only got it because she's black. And yes, cast more black. And it, although we uh, we we very rarely talk about Doctor Who. Uh, but I mean, the, no, we've never brought that up before. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a while. <laughs> but when Jodie Whittaker played the Doctor in, in that show, admittedly, she came along a very bad time. <laughs> 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 but even if her performance and the writing that mm. led to her performance had been phenomenal, there would have still been quite a large group of people who said, mm, yeah, she only got the job because she was a woman and they were they were determined to cast a woman and it's that kind of thing isn't it it's the it's the stuntness of it that just puts people off and it takes away from what we're yeah it's it's very distracting and it's very unfair but also going back to what you were saying about the slave you know almost like every time you talk about black people it's about the slave trade i mean th- that's an exaggeration that's not, you know it's not actually true but there is um, an element of that. And, uh, you know, if ever you say anything, and similarly, you could say the same about women, we didn't have the vote for hundreds of years. You know? <laughs> well, you never didn't have the vote because you weren't alive, you know, <laughs> in that time. And similarly, you know, every time you talk to a Jewish person, you know, it's not always about the Holocaust. All these groups of people have so much more as part of their identity, a part of their history that is brushed aside. You know, even something like rap music. Mm. Like if you said to a hundred people, you know, word association game or something, <laughs> and you, I mean, it, it very, not, I don't advise doing this. You're ultra thin ice here, <laughs> yeah. I think, yes. <laughs> but, but if you, if you said, what is something that you associate with black people? And, a lot of people would immediately say slavery, you know, and that that kind of the history of mm. slavery. Whereas rap music, the blues, I'm not an expert on music, but all of that kind of musically the culture, a huge force, yes, in the, certainly yeah. in the 20th century. And look at Motown, for God's sake, it's yeah. just this great driving force. All the stuff that they've done to society, the world evolves. Mm. I just. I, Sick of hearing myself say it, but it's true. We evolve. Society evolves. We are not the same as we were 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 500 years ago, 2000. We just evolve all the time. Yes. When are we going to get reparation from the Romans? That, well, that's what I want to know. <laughs> we have history lessons in school for a reason. I mean, whether we cover the right things in history lessons is a whole different debate. But yet there is a place to be taught about things like that. There is a place to be taught about gay history and, you know, the pre-decriminalisation. But- pre-decimalisation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the gays were decimalised in 1968. <laughs> yes. We yes, there were 12 of us. And then <laughs> they cut us down to 10 for simplicity. But yes, talk about the history, commemorate the history and don't forget about it. But it happened in the past. It's in the past. We live in a completely different world now. Let's embrace that world and not try and create more division. That example about the Australian exhibition, well, we just wanted men to know what it felt like for us, us women. Who, <laughs> when was the last time a woman got turned away from an art gallery? None of you were alive when that happened because it was a 100 years ago. You get over it. It's probably all on the period or something. <laughs> And that's the end of it. <laughs> 45 in the post. Shall we rate this uh, in powers? Yes. I feel quite strongly about this. It's not five worthy, but it's a good solid four. I just think that we need to get over ourselves as a society about keep banging drums that long, long since stop being beaten. We... <laughs> That was a tortured analogy. But we have moved on from all these things. They're not relevant anymore. And the only reason that they're staying relevant is because groups of people across the board, whoever Mm. you are, keep raking up history at the same time as trying to erase that history and pretend that it never happened. We move on as a society. Just stop going over old ground. Stop fighting fights that have already been fought and won. You've won. Yeah, and you're not doing any favours for yourself. So, yes, 
the end. Yes, I think I'm going to go with you as well on a, a four on this one. I, it is, it's an important topic. It does feel like things like the examples that you've raised are backwards steps, whereas we should be going forward. We do live in a very diverse society and we should be very proud and celebratory about that, not siloing ourselves for the sake of something that happened hundreds of years ago. I realise the privilege that we get to do of saying that as to why white men. privilege. <laughs> but that's not just us saying, oh, yeah, it was nothing. Yeah, they need, to, they need to forget about slavery. It's just, we do, we do need to move on. We, do, you know. Yeah, it's not helping. No. Coming up next on the White Privilege Podcast, <laughs> it's Screaming Queens. <laughs> Nothing to do with black people, nothing to do with gays. <laughs> I just really, really like this. It's a film I saw recently called The Scapegoat. Mm. I think it's on ITVX. If not, it's on BBC. It's one of the in Bunny Ears terrestrial ones. <laughs> but it's about a doppelganger. Okay. It's basically The Prince and the Pauper, but set in the 1920s. And uh, yes, it's about the guy who walks into a pub and he sees his exact double. <laughs> and it turns out that it's an incredibly rich lord who's sick of his life and in money troubles so for a laugh he agrees to swap places with this pauper while he escapes for a while until things die down and i won't spoil it any further but it is hands down one of the best things i've ever seen Ooh. it was a really really good film it's very downton-esque hmm. so if you like downton abbey this will yes. sense you but yeah, that's my recommendation for this week, The Scapegoat. Excellent. I will check it out. And on that note, I don't think we've offended <laughs> as many I mean, people as we can do. one of our mo mo most offensive uh, <laughs> pods that we've done. And I must also apologise because it should really have been my birthday honours. But uh, I've been a bit lax in researching. It's been a very, very busy. <laughs> so yes, I will get around to my birthday honours. In June, at some point, yeah. six, six months later. <laughs> yeah. well, we look forward to it very much, uh, but we'll call it a day for now and we'll speak to you all very soon. Bye. Ta ta. <laughs>